the unsung heroes of any farm would be the sheep dogs, the cattle dogs, mm. and the puppies. We don't sort of think about looking after them that much. Yeah, I mean, I think things have got better, um, but it's, I think it's something we haven't talked about for a few years, and I think it's, it's good. Uh, they shouldn't fall off the bandwagon because they are, as you say, they are the unsung heroes, so to speak. And in years gone by, I was quite disillusioned for many years as to why we seem to persistently face the same basic issues with them as far as being underweight, uh, poor, poorly nourished, um, heavily parasitised, and all, really basic sort of healthcare issues that, um, that uh, it was quite upsetting that in, in, in times where where great advances were happening, that we were still facing these basic problems with 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 these these dogs that do nothing more but want want to do their work um, to the best of their ability. I'm happy to say that in recent years, my feeling is that the plight of the old the old sheep dog has has improved in leaps and bounds, and I guess uh, that says a lot for the worth um, in both financial and and companionship that that we all get from these animals I mean to, they're one of the favorite my favorite things that I work with every day is the old sheep dog they're just so giving so I think it is timely just to go over things um, as far as you know just good sound basics mm. things like nutrition obviously absolutely <laughs> so <clears throat> that's a good place to start Rob so nutrition I think um, you know that in times gone by and perhaps we're at risk in recent times of, of actually running back into this, this zone where uh, you know a full meat diet was sort of the basis of, of feeding sheep dogs and um, the, the problem is with, with meat only diets is that it's exceptionally hard to keep the ratio of calcium to phosphorus accurate and in growing dogs and in young dogs that's, that's essential for good bone growth we need a higher ratio of calcium to phosphorus which is actually the reverse case in, in meat-based diets, and that's, so that's why we can get problems with, you know, with with uh, poor, poorly developed skeletons. And in recent times, there's been a real push in the domestic uh, pet market to feed these, you know, these raw diets. And um, I guess the premise is that it's more natural, and we're all into this sort of natural, the the wave of na of natural, you know, processes these days. But the problem is, is that <clears throat> it's very, very difficult to have standardised uh, levels of nutrients that we can uh, guarantee in a, in, a, in a raw food diet because the chunks of material are so big, it's very hard to keep, to keep these nutrients standardised where they can be in processed diets. And so my feeling is that <clears throat> even today, I still err on the side of a good, well-recognised brand of processed food that we can guarantee the nutrients that are going in and, and they've been well proven and researched and um, especially when we're talking about working dogs, that's obviously so important. So vaccinations and worming? Vaccinations, uh, there's been a little bit of a shift in recent years. We've got a better understanding on this concept that we call duration of immunity. And although we feel that we may have been under vaccinating young dogs, it's very important that these puppies get a good full course of vaccination and then definitely an annual booster the year following. But we're starting to, to develop knowledge now or, or understand that the duration of immunity for things like parvovirus, distemper, hepatitis, actually in some animals we think it may be lifelong and so the real need for repeat vaccinations may be uh, non-existent at all or at least much less frequent than what we've usually undertaken which was usually every year. Um, but I think it's very important that people don't fall off the fall off the bandwagon so to speak um, in relation to making sure that an adequate, good adequate puppy course is given which usually um, means three or four, sometimes four shots finishing at about four months of age and then a really good solid immune booster at about a year of age or a year after that final puppy shot um, and that usually sets things up very very soundly. And what about um, worming? Worming, parasite control, obviously exceptionally important particularly in, in young puppies. 
So the typical advice is for roundworms, especially they're born infected, uh, um, virtually 100% of puppies are born infected with roundworms. Um, so it's a nasty little parasite that crosses the placenta and infects the puppy before it's born. So every two weeks until they're about 14 to 16 weeks of age. And then of course, an integrated sort of process involving both worming and good, good food control, making sure no raw food or scavenging occurs and, and any dog kill, home, home kill dog tuckers are, are either frozen for a good period of time, 10 days in fact, or, or rendered in a high temperature to inactivate any parasites. Just because sheep measles in particular, we have an ongoing battle in New Zealand with, with this parasite and it devalues uh, obviously the meat product coming from this country significantly. So uh, a good feeding strategy and good worming strategy is so important. And I guess it goes hand in hand with, with good elevated motels, clean of feces and things like that, where in the old days when hygiene was a major concern, we used to get a lot of, uh, a lot of, of whip worm uh, problems um, and that they, they were that, that particular parasite, the little larvae penetrate the skin through the pores usually, and so that um, I guess iterates how important good hygiene is. And some some of these whip worms are a little bit harder, and hook worms are a little bit harder to kill than normal worms. And so it's best to avoid uh, major problems with good hygiene and good husbandry practice rather than having to deal with the situation. Uh, from a from a treatment perspective, so prevention rather than cure. Really. Absolutely, same as you know, it's the same concept, a modern concept with with preventative medicine. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.